Alright, so today, today's just gonna be really a chill day. So obviously this channel is all about keeping you informed and giving you the best possible chance of recovering any files that you may need to recover sometime in the future. But what I've never actually talked about is the software itself and the different parameters that you should keep in mind when you are looking for a piece of software to recover photos or files or documents or whatever. So today, let's have a chat about software. So the first thing to touch on is performance. Specifically when it comes to performance, the main things that you need to keep in mind are the speed at which the scan is run and the final results of that scan. So nothing is worse than panicking about losing your files and then finding out that it's gonna take 21 hours to scan your entire drive only to show you at the end that it recovered nothing. That's, that's just really not, not cool. So obviously speed is important. However, I will say, that it's kind of nuanced in that a balance needs to be struck between the two. So obviously you want a software that's going to be quick and is going to scan and expedite those results for you, but you don't want to sacrifice those results for a piece of fast software. So there's a lot of fast software out there, but the results that you're going to get will be lackluster. So keep that in mind, always look for a balance. Now the next thing is price, and uh, this is something that I do get torched about uh, on a regular basis online, and the reason why is because everyone wants a free solution. I mean, that totally makes sense. Again, you're in a panic, you want that free solution that's just going to give you your files back so you don't have to spend any money and risk losing even more on an already dire situation. However, as with most things in the world of software, the paid version is almost always better than the free solution. And I really believe that when you look at a piece of software or really anything in general, you need to weigh all the potential benefits and risks against the actual price that you're paying up front. And when it comes to software, there are a few things that can actually create a buffer that make it a lot more worth it. So things like trial versions uh, and trial features like recovering a certain amount of files for free or things like that can actually prove to make the price a lot more worth it and a lot less impactful in your overall decision. Now next up is OS support and this should seem pretty obvious. I mean you do want to get a piece of software that works with your operating system but there are a few little things that I do need to mention here. A place where this is really important is in the realm of updates. So obviously operating systems grow over time. They mature and they change completely and if a piece of software is not being updated regularly then that software is just going to fall by the wayside once your operating system becomes up to date in the future. And on top of that, it's not only important for a piece of software to be compatible with your operating system, but also to be optimized so that things can run quickly and smoothly and also so you don't run into any crashes or things like total corruption, which can happen if a piece of software is not optimized properly. And also, if you have multiple personal computers, like I have a Windows desktop and I also have a MacBook Pro, having one piece of software that is blanketed over all of the operating systems is extremely beneficial, meaning that you only need one software key, which ultimately saves you money. Now next up is storage and file type support. So again, it seems pretty obvious, but this is something that a lot of people actually overlook. So let's say that you work in Photoshop a lot, like I do, and you need to recover some PSD images, which are the Photoshop type documents. Well, if you buy a piece of software that doesn't support those types of files, you're gonna be kind of caught in an awkward situation because now you can't recover those files and you just paid for software that to you is completely worthless. And on top of that, if you have a drive, like say a CFast card, for example, that I use all the time, and you plug it into your computer and all of a sudden it converts to a raw file system, and the software that you have doesn't support raw file systems, again, it's a little awkward. So all it takes to make sure that you don't get caught in one of these situations is just a simple visit to the website of the company in question, and oftentimes that will resolve any questions that you may have about whether or not a file type or a storage type is supported by your software. Now next up is usability. Now in my experience, a lot and pretty much all apps these days have come a very long way in terms of their usability and things have gotten quite simple and easy to use. However, there are two main camps that most people fall into. Either A, people like to have a huge feature set that's really all in their face and kind of complicated. But for me, I don't really like that. I just like things to be simple, easy to use, especially in the case of file recovery where I'm you know, kind of sweating a little bit and so I can just go and recover my stuff. I don't have to worry about trying to learn a whole new piece of software or even go to YouTube to learn a whole new piece of software. I can just grab it and go. And number six on the list is feature set. And again, this should be pretty obvious, but it's also worth mentioning that sometimes some pieces of software will offer not only the file recovery feature, but 
also some additional features that will help to protect your data and protect your drives in the future to avoid a potentially disastrous situation from happening again. And so again, checking the website to make sure that your core piece of functionality is included, but also some additional features to help protect all of your stuff is never a bad idea. And finally, number seven is security. So this is something that a lot of people tend to overlook, especially in the heat of the moment. They just wanna get their stuff back and they don't care what it costs or what they have to do to get it. But that's a mistake, at least in my opinion, because cybersecurity is a real threat. And when you're downloading software that is marketed to people like you that want to get your files back, a lot of times you will end up trading some of your cybersecurity for your files. Or you can even download things like viruses or ransomware, things that come along with the software that will end up putting you in an even worse spot than you were before. And the thing is, is that this kind of actually goes back to the price point, uh, is that Oftentimes with software, when it's very secure, this comes at a price. And so oftentimes that price that you're paying, yeah, it may seem a little expensive, but at least you know that that software is going to be robust, up to date and completely secure so that you can have some peace of mind so that at least you know that all of your stuff is safe. And that to me is pretty priceless. All right, so that's about it. Again, very chill video, but just wanted to go over those seven things with you guys because I think they're very important. And I think that that should help you to have a more informed decision of which software to pick the next time you need to recover some of your files. So if you guys enjoyed this video, always be sure to leave us a like down below. And if you guys want to see me cover something else down the road, then always be sure to let us know in the comments. But that's going to be it for this video. My name is Andy. Thank you for watching.